All right, welcome to, excuse me, welcome to part two of our post-election um, podcasty, whatever this is, thingy. Okay, um, we were discussing Devin Balwick's uh, poem and specifically her decision to use a burqa as a sign of oppression, specifically this decision coming from a white woman, um, a K-12 through educator. Um, there's a few things to consider here, and um, to see them properly, you're going to have to read all of her poems um, together. I probably wouldn't have published this piece if it were out of context of any other um, uh, Muslim American issues. Um, and here's the cat. Okay. Hello, cat's tail. Um, <clears throat> I, I published it in the context of her grappling with other issues that she as an educator is dealing with um, besides uh, what she sees as the sexism and bigotry of a Muslim student. Also the questions and the militarization of her school, um, how she as a white woman um, feels and needs to feel about uh, her students of various um, races and faith. Um, the sum total of her poems is less about declaring, I will not accept a burqa, and more about questioning, who am I as a K through 12 educator? What do I need to be doing? These are real issues that K-12 educators grapple with. Um, I have a number of close friends who are uh, black women who are K-12 educators, and um, they talk about, you know, the, the problems they have, um, the uh, degree to which um, their Muslim students um, are, um, specifically their Arab students, are often uh, raised to be racist and encouraged to look down on them as black women. Um, of course, they tell much longer stories about the way white students treat them. Um, but, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's a different thing, and I guess not one that uh, Devin Ballwood deals with, which doesn't make what Devin Ballwood is dealing with any less important. A lot of um, regular, unlikely readers and contributors would consider Devin Bowitt's uh, poem um, bigoted, specifically Islamic of all, Islamophobic. Excuse me. They would question. There's noise. There's noise in the neighborhood. It's all good. They would question um, uh, Devin Bowitt's decision to use a. Uh, Muslim symbol to symbolize um, sexist oppression when there are so many Christian symbols to choose from. And before we get into that specifically, I'd like to talk about Unlikely's relationship with religion. Now, I just held up a book that said, Hope After Faith, um, A Pastor's Journey into Atheism. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned that I'll be using it as inspiration for the libretto I'm writing, which is true. I'll be using it as inspiration, Hello Kitty, for a specific character. The thing about that character is that character does not become an atheist. Their faith changes, becomes a lot stricter, but they do not actually lose their faith entirely. Um, Unlikely stories is not anti-religious. We are irreligious. We make fun of sacred cows and sacred books, um, but we do not deny anyone the right to their sacred cows or sacred books. <clears throat> Here in the United States, Christianity is often associated, especially in the Southern states, Christianity is also often associated quite unfairly with bigoted persons. I mean, this is natural because a whole lot of bigoted people are claiming to be Christians. Of course, they're not. That's not possible. They can believe in a Christian cosmology, but if you're a bigoted person who believes in a Christian cosmology, you're a Satan worshiper. We at Unlikely Stories believe in the hip, fun form of Satan worship, as in rock on. We uh, do not believe in um, subscribing to a Christian cosmology and in doing the opposite of what Christ says. Um, we, we see these Christian bigots as um, Satan worshippers. We see ISIS as or ISIL as Satan worshippers, and um, we want no business with any of them. Um, we see um, Islamophobia as Satanic, and again, not the cool kind. I, I'm sorry to give Satanism a bad rep. So the point is that what we do is we make fun of religion, um, which is not the same thing as attacking religion or trying to destroy religion. And one thing we definitely acknowledge is that while uh, attacks on Christianity from a uh, white Western American perspective may be unfair and may be unreasonable, they are not 
typically racist, um, Dylan Roof and the true crazies like that aside. Um, attacks on the religious um, standards of Islam, on the other hand, are very frequently motivated by racism and xenophobia. Um, it's fine for conservatives to say they hate Muslims, oh, Muslims aren't a race. And you know what? They're playing fucking games. They're racists, all right? Fuck that shit. Um, <clears throat> those um, uh, conservatives that, that hate Muslims. I'm not attacking uh, genuine conservatives. Um, the ones who have been kicked out of the Republican Party. Yeah, those conservatives. In this atmosphere of uh, racist Islamophobia or um, anti-religious sentiment masquerading, at, um, and I'm sorry, racism masquerading as anti-religious sentiment, um, this is the environment in which um, I chose to publish Devin Balwitz's um, piece in which she chose to make the burqa a symbol of oppression. Um, in the context of her poems, which I very much hope you'll read, I do not know if um, they can rightfully be called racist, if they should rightfully be called Islamophobia. And really, that's a question that I want to ask, and I want you to ask, and I want you to answer. Um, for yourself on in the comments, if you like. Um, I think it's a, a valid question. Please do answer it in the context of reading all her poems. Um, those were, that was the context in which I published this piece, and I hope you'll uh, see the, um, treat them as a set, which is how they were sent to me as a set, um, uh, tackling several aspects of her work as a K-12 teacher. Please do check them out, and please do give us your opinion. As far as the election itself, um, there is now a Never Trump banner on unlikelystories.org, and it's going to stay there. Um, Donald Trump is not the president of Unlikely Stories. Um, he is not going to become the president of Unlikely Stories, and we are not going to acknowledge him as the president. Um, Steve Bannon, the uh, misogynist anti-Semite that um, he's um, appointed to White House staff, is not my countryman. Kellyanne Conway, who threatened Senator Harry Reid with legal action for criticizing um, Trump, is not my countrywoman. These people are no more connected to me than any other outside fascist invader would be. They are fascists. They are attempting an overthrow of the United States government, and we will never yield to them and we will never acknowledge them. Um, and that is going to be a vital point, part of Unlikely's mission going forward. Um, right now, as far as I can tell, I really think that the uh, Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill are trying to make Trump quit just by uh, um, psyching him out. And I think that's good. And I think that's what they should be doing. Um, what we should be doing is acknowledging that the Republican Party is now a hate group. The Republican Party is the United States of America is not a conservative group. Um, the conservatives have either... Um, fled for the libertarian candidate or held their nose and voted for Clinton. Um, and the Republican Party of the United States, as it stands right now, um, is the enemy of America, is the enemy of Americans, and is absolutely the enemy of unlikely stories. Again, this is not a rejection of American conservatism. This is a rejection of American fascism, which has taken over uh, the Republican Party. Um, that's that. That's what we do here. And should you subscribe to Unlikely Stories, um, you are giving money to an anti-Trump organization. Uh, an anti-Trump organization that's focused on art. I mean, if, you, if your goal is to um, use your money to get rid of Trump, there's probably more direct means. Um, but if your goal is to make anti-Trump art, here we are. We are the exact place for you. That is exactly what we are doing until further notice. Um, and again, that's that's the Republican Party as it now stands. Um, the people on Capitol Hill can be okay with a President Pence. He's not going to screw up that aspect of American life, but he sure is going to screw up our lives. So fuck him too. All right, that's it. And if you're still here and if you're still subscribing, you are beautiful. And I'm trying to turn this off. Okay.